The Second World War ended almost 80 years ago, but the eco war still haunts us. Total propaganda, terrible experiments on people and mass executions of entire nations cause horror and fear even now. In this video, you will learn about the 20 most unusual and shocking discoveries of the Second World War. Hi friend, you're on the Kurtop channel. Underground Factories in Germany, the remains of underground factories under the Nazi regime have been discovered, where V-2 rockets and other military equipment were developed and produced using forced labor from concentration camp prisoners. These factories, hidden deep underground, were created to ensure the continuation of war production in the face of Allied bombing. Exploring these underground complexes opens up new insights into the scope and methods used by Nazi Germany in its attempts to achieve technological superiority during the war. The discoveries highlight the brutality of the regime, demonstrating that the Nazis did not stop at the massive use of slave labor to achieve their goals. These underground factories became a grim symbol of the industrialization of war crimes and the extreme measures the Nazis resorted to in their pursuit of victory. Collection of Paintings in 2012, a discovery in Munich shocked the global creative community. A billion-dollar collection of paintings confiscated by the Nazis was found in a modest-sized apartment. Among the works were works by such masters as Marc Chagall, Pablo Picasso and Henri Matisse. This collection represents lost treasures of European art, many of which were thought lost for decades. The paintings fell into the hands of the Nazis as a result of a massive campaign to confiscate works of art that the regime considered degenerate or belonging to Jewish families. Many of these works were confiscated from their owners in the pre-war and war years, and after the war they were considered lost or destroyed. The discovery of this collection was made possible thanks to the investigative actions of the German authorities, who were investigating a case of tax fraud. The investigation led to a search of the apartment where these priceless works of art were discovered. The collection included both well-known masterpieces and lesser-known works that are nevertheless of great artistic and historical value. The find caused an international outcry because it raised questions about ownership, restitution and moral responsibility. For many descendants of Jewish families, stripped of their treasures by the Nazis, the discovery offered hope for the return of lost works of art that had become a symbol of their history and heritage. Spitfire Fighters in Burma Known for their speed, maneuverability and firepower, these British fighters played a key role in the Battle of Britain, becoming a symbol of courage and bravery. According to legend, in the face of the Japanese advance, dozens of new Spitfires were buried in the jungles of Burma to prevent their capture. Since then, they have become something of a holy grail for treasure hunters and military archaeologists. Years of searching and studying maps and documents from the war led to the start of large-scale archaeological excavations. Using modern technology, including ground-penetrating radar and satellite navigation, teams of archaeologists were able to locate the suspected burial sites of these aircraft. Excitement and tension grew with each day of excavation, because everyone could witness the discovery of not only superbly preserved examples of aircraft, but also key elements of military history. The Spitfires recovered are models sent from Britain to support the Allies in Asia. Their discovery allows specialists and restorers to recreate and understand the technology technical aspects and operating conditions of these legendary machines. Burials in the Katyn Forest the discovery of mass graves in the Katyn Forest near Smolensk, which in Russia, still causes a lot of controversy. In 1943, German troops advancing on the Soviet Union discovered numerous graves of Polish officers. The Soviet Union denied any involvement, saying the Nazis were to blame. According to the official version of Western countries, in 1940, on the orders of the top leadership of the USSR, thousands of Polish officers, police officers, scientists and public figures captured during the Soviet invasion invasion of Poland in September 1939 were executed. These massacres, carried out by the NKVD, became known as the Katyn Massacre. This discovery caused a wide international resonance, becoming an important argument in accusing the Stalinist regime of committing war crimes. For Poland, Katyn became a symbol of national tragedy and betrayal by the Soviet government, with which they had previously been considered allies. However, not everything is so simple. There is another opinion with supporting documents 
documents regarding this tragic event. In 1943, when the Nazis were defeated in the Battle of Stalingrad, the leadership of the Third Reich, and in particular the most powerful propaganda machine of the time in the person of Goebbels, had a desire to carry out an internal split. The Nazis themselves shot the Polish officers and allegedly discovered them themselves. This was done in order to point out Stalin's repressions and to antagonize the Allies among themselves. However, some Polish journalists did not believe the Nazis and conducted their own investigation. Some of the documents confirming the Nazi crime were prepared for the Nuremberg Tribunal, where the Nazis were tried. However, under strange circumstances, everyone who at least somehow tried to whitewash the Stalinist regime of that time began to die. Surprisingly, documents and everyone who was somehow involved in the investigation of this tragedy disappeared. Nevertheless, the Nuremberg International Military Tribunal indicted Hermann Göring, Nazi No. 2, and Alfred Jodl, the acting chief Wehrmacht High Command, for the Katyn crime. These are documented facts. It is difficult to believe that the Soviet army was involved in this execution because the Nazi allies also had a more terrible tragedy involving the Poles. This is the Volin massacre, which many are now trying not to remember. Moreover, this event is maximally confirmed and documented throughout the world. Operation Bernard Operation Bernard was one of the most ambitious and secret operations of World War II carried out by Nazi Germany to destabilize the economies of the Allied countries through the mass production of counterfeit banknotes. The main purpose of the operation was to flood the British and American markets with counterfeit pounds and dollars, which was supposed to lead to inflation and undermine confidence in the national currency. Launched in 1942 under the leadership of the SS, the operation exploited the talents of concentration camp prisoners skilled artists, printers and bankers who were promised better conditions in exchange for their participation in the production of counterfeits. The center of the operation was a secret printing press in the Sachsenhausen concentration camp, where perfect copies of British pounds and later American dollars were created. The quality of the fakes was so high that even experts had difficulty identifying them. Fake pound sterling are considered some of the best counterfeits in history, and some remain in circulation for many years after the war. It was planned that counterfeit money would be used to finance espionage operations in enemy territory, as well as to purchase valuables and strategic goods in neutral countries. However, despite the successful production of large quantities of counterfeit currency, plans for mass distribution were not fully realized due to logistical and strategic issues. The end of the war and the fall of Nazi Germany brought an end to Operation Bernard, but the effects of the campaign were felt for many years to come. The discovery of huge quantities of counterfeit banknotes after the war prompted the need to update security measures and money-making technologies. Japanese Battleship Masashi the battleship Masashi, along with its sister Yamato, represented the apogee of Japanese naval engineering during World War II and one of the largest and most powerful warships ever built. Launched in 1940, Masashi weighed more than 72,000 tons when fully loaded and was armed with nine 460mm guns that could fire shells weighing more than one ton at a distance of up to 42 kilometers. These giant ships were designed to dominate the Pacific theater of war, but their fate was tragic. Masashi was actively involved in combat operations during the war, participating in a number of major battles, including the Battle of the Sibuyan Sea, where it was sunk in October 1944 by American aircraft. The sinking of the Masashi became a symbol of changing priorities in naval warfare, where the advantage passed to aircraft carriers and aircraft, and the giant battleships lost their superiority. The discovery of the Masashi wreck in 2015 by undersea exploration aficionado and Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen Allen was a major event. Allen's team found the ship at a depth of more than 1,000 meters in the Sibuyan Sea. The use of modern underwater vehicles made it possible to obtain unique footage of the wreckage of the ship, revealing details of its design and damage received in the last battle. The Dove's Secret Message in 2012, in England, an amazing discovery was made in the chimney of one of the houses, which opened a new page in the history of military intelligence and communications during the Second World War. It is about the skeleton of a pigeon, which is believed to have been a signal pigeon that died on the mission. The discovery in itself is already of historical interest, but the real sensation was that a metal capsule containing an undeciphered message was found with the remains of the bird. This message written on thin paper consists of 27 lines of 
coded characters that have not yet been deciphered. Researchers speculate that it could have been a secret message sent from the front to Allied headquarters during critical operations. Pigeon mail was an important means of communication during the war due to its ability to deliver messages in conditions where other means of communication were unavailable or too dangerous. The discovery has challenged cryptographers and historians around the world to decipher the message, which could contain valuable information about military operations, intelligence, or even the location of a military unit. This discovery also highlights the importance and uniqueness of pigeon mail as a means of transmitting important messages, which was especially important during times of global conflict. Interestingly, the search for the key to this cipher continues to this day. French Resistance Weapons Depot in France, while renovating one of the old houses, a startling discovery was made – a hidden weapons cache that probably belonged to members of the French resistance during World War II. This occupation-era arsenal included handguns, grenades, explosives, and documentation of underground activities. The discovery of finds of this kind is rare and is of great value to historians and researchers. The arsenal, found in a cache under the floor of the house, testifies to the well-organized and decisive preparation of the French people to fight the occupiers. Resistance in France was multi-layered. This movement organized sabotage, intelligence operations, distribution of anti-Nazi leaflets, and assistance to the Allies. The weapons used by the resistance were often delivered by British and American allies via parachute drops or transported through neutral countries. Churchill's Secret Bunker in 2020, researchers in the UK made a surprising discovery when they discovered one of the secret bunkers built to support Churchill's secret army, the existence of which few knew. This army, known as the Auxiliaries, was created at the beginning of the Second World War as an underground resistance in the event of a successful German invasion of Great Britain. The bunker, found deep in the English countryside, was one of around 500 similar structures located across the country. It was a fortified underground shelter equipped with everything necessary for a long stay, from places to sleep to warehouses with weapons and ammunition. The bunkers were intended for small groups of armed civilians who were supposed to carry out sabotage, intelligence, and reconnaissance behind enemy lines in the event of occupation. These secret units were formed at the initiative of Winston Churchill, who insisted on creating a resistance network capable of providing significant resistance to the Nazi invaders. The participants in this network were recruited from among especially reliable and physically prepared citizens and underwent specialized training. Women's Concentration Camp Ravensbrück the Ravensbrück concentration camp, located in Germany, was founded in 1939 and was the largest women's concentration camp of the Nazi system. Tens of thousands of women of various nationalities were held here, subjected to torture, forced labor, and horrible medical experiments. Between 1942 and 1943, cruel experiments were carried out on prisoners at the Ravensbrück concentration camp, during which deep cuts were made to their calves, and then bacteria from tetanus, streptococcus, and gas gangrene were rubbed into these wounds. Additionally, crushed glass and sawdust were injected into the wounds, simulating the conditions of combat wounds. The purpose of these inhuman experiments, carried out by German doctors, was to study treatments that could be used to treat wounded soldiers at the front. Archaeological excavations carried out at the Ravensburg campsite in recent years have uncovered personal belongings of prisoners, providing new data for understanding the lives and fate of prisoners. Among the artifacts found were jewelry, pieces of fabric, shoes, and personal hygiene items that prisoners hid in the hope of maintaining some connection with their former life and humanity. These little things, seemingly insignificant against the backdrop of the overall tragedy, nevertheless tell a huge story about the strength and spirit, hope and despair that lived in the hearts of the women of Ravensbrück. Particularly valuable are finds related to children who were also kept in the camp with their mothers or were born in captivity. Toys, children's shoes, and clothing found during the excavations highlight the inhumanity of the regime which did not spare even the smallest. Excavations on the territory of Ravensburg continue, and each new discovery helps to complement and clarify the historical picture of the camp. Panther Tank in the Basement 
In 2015, an event occurred in Germany that caused enormous public and media resonance. A World War II-era Panther tank was discovered in the basement garage of a private home, along with a number of other military artifacts associated with Nazi Germany. Recognized as one of the most powerful and efficient tanks of its time, the Panther is a rare exhibit and a subject of particular interest to historians and collectors. Along with the tank, an anti-tank gun, a torpedo, and numerous other military items were found in the garage, each a testament to the technological progress and war efforts of Nazi Germany. The discovery was made possible by an anonymous tip followed by a search by police and military experts that led to this unusual discovery. Writing denunciations in Germany can be said to be part of German culture, but it is surprising how the owner of such a huge military arsenal managed to hide a tank in his basement for 70 years. The owner of the house, an elderly man, was a history enthusiast and is believed to have collected these items over the years. The question of the origin of the tank and other items, as well as how they were delivered to the basement, caused a lot of controversy among experts. Judicial authorities were faced with the task of determining whether the owner broke the law by owning such objects, especially given the strictness of German law regarding Nazi-era symbols and artifacts. For many, this incident was a reminder that even decades after the end of the war, its egos are still reflected in our modern world, sometimes in the most unexpected and surprising forms. And how much more similar military equipment and weapons of those years are stored in basements and cellars throughout Germany. Sejima Island Marked by history as one of the darkest places during World War II, Sejima Island was nicknamed Hell on Earth due to the brutal treatment of prisoners of war held there in extremely harsh conditions. Located in a remote part of Japan, this island became the site of mass suffering and death of Allied soldiers captured by the Japanese army. In recent years, archaeological excavations on Sejima Island have shed light on the island's dark history by revealing mass graves of prisoners of war. These findings provided an opportunity to deepen our understanding understanding of the lives, conditions of detention, and circumstances of death of prisoners forced to endure unbearable conditions, hunger, disease, and cruel treatment. The island, used for military purposes, was isolated from the rest of the world, which made it possible to hide what was happening here from the international community. The stories from survivors and historical documents testified to inhumane ordeals, but only recent excavations made it possible to fully appreciate the scale of the tragedy. Finds on the island include personal belongings of prisoners of war, letters that were never sent, and fragments of clothing that help reconstruct the lifestyle and final moments of the people stranded here. German Refuge in 2021, during renovation work in Germany, a cache containing Nazi artifacts and documents was found in the wall of one of the houses. The find included medals, military uniforms, personal letters, photographs, as well as propaganda materials and other items dating back to the Nazi Germany period. These artifacts, neatly hidden in the wall, were likely walled up in the final days of the war or immediately after its end, when the owners may have tried to hide their connection with the Nazi regime for fear or possible reprisals from the Allied forces or the new government. The find became evidence of the tragic history of those years when objects that once carried pride and ideological significance turned into symbols of shame and fear. Among the documents found were personal letters that provide valuable primary sources for understanding the feelings and opinions of ordinary people. The photographs provide insight into everyday life, cultural and social aspects of Nazi Germany, allowing for a better understanding of how the ordinary coexisted with the exceptional. The discovery and others like it presents a society with a dilemma. On the one hand, the importance of preserving historical memory. On the other, the need to ensure that these materials are not used for propaganda purposes or praise of the Nazi regime. What do you think? Do the symbols and artifacts of the Third Reich have a right to life? Or can their existence revive fascism and Nazism and take us back to the times of the extermination of entire nations? Write your opinion in the comments under the video. Camp Sobibor the Sobibor extermination camp, located in Poland, was one of the most sinister sites of Nazi genocide during World War II. Recent archaeological excavations at the site have shed light on the dark history of the Holocaust, revealing remains of gas chambers, living quarters, and personal belongings of victims. These findings provided important evidence of the scale of crimes committed in the death camps. The Sobibor gas chambers were a central element in the extermination of the population, and their discovery provides insight into the technical 
technological aspect of the Nazi system of mass extermination. Excavations have revealed the foundations and structure of these sinister structures where the Nazis killed millions of innocent people. Finds of the victims' personal belongings such as shoes, jewelry, children's toys and household items speak to the scale of the tragedy and the personal stories of those who were doomed to die. These objects serve as powerful reminders of the brutality of the crimes committed against them. The discovery of the Sobibor campsite not only contributes to the understanding of the history of the Holocaust, but also serves as an important lesson for future generations. It reminds us of the need to remember the horrors of the past. Discovery of the Leningrad Diary in the archives of St. Petersburg, formerly known as Leningrad, a unique discovery was made that sheds light on one of the darkest pages in the history of the Great Patriotic War, the Siege of Leningrad. A newly discovered diary, written by an unknown author during the siege, provides a personal account of life and survival in a city cut off from the rest of the world by German troops for nearly 900 days. The text of the diary covers the period from the first days of the siege until its breakthrough, describing the daily difficulties, fears, and hopes of the inhabitants of Leningrad. The author documents everything from severe shortages of food, water and fuel to the heroic efforts of residents to defend their home from the enemy. The diary also touches on moments of personal grief and joy. The discovery of this document was a significant event for researchers and anyone interested in the history of World War II. Leningrad Diary allows you to look into the soul of ordinary people who found themselves in the midst of one of the most brutal blockades in history. This diary has become an important historical source, supplementing the official history of the Siege of Leningrad with personal experiences and testimonies, making the story more complete. Secret Tunnels Under London during construction work in London, a forgotten network of secret tunnels running underneath the city is discovered. These underground corridors are believed to have been used by military and government agencies during World War II, both to protect against German bombing and to conduct covered operations. The tunnels extend for several kilometers under the central part of the city, forming a complex network that once served as a hidden arterial route for the movement of people and important documents, as well as for secret meetings of military commanders and government officials. Some of these underground passages lead to buildings of strategic importance, including military headquarters and government bunkers. The discovery confirms numerous rumors and legends of London residents about the existence of an extensive network of tunnels under the city. Until now, most of these underground structures remain unexplored due to their secret status and limited access. Archaeologists and historians say the discovery is important for understanding how London sought to protect its infrastructure and key individuals during the most tense years of the war. Inside the tunnels, Remains of ancient communications, military equipment and even personal belongings have been found, making them a valuable source for studying the daily life of the time. Research and conservation of the discovered tunnels continues and promises to reveal even more secrets about life and the defense of Britain's capital during the dark years of the Second World War. Secret Manhattan Project there is one type of weapon in the world, the presence of which radically changes the country's position on the geopolitical map of the world – atomic weapons. During the dark times of World War II, when the world was divided by terrible events, a group of eminent scientists gathered in a secret location to work on a project that could radically change the course of history. This project was called Manhattan – the mission to create the first atomic bomb. It was a race against time and science, where the stakes were higher than ever. The spark that ignited the Manhattan Project came from a small group of Jewish refugees who came to the United States seeking refuge from Nazi Germany. They warned that atomic weapons were being developed in Berlin. Surprisingly, all information about this development was open and available for study. But behind these great scientific discoveries and engineering achievements lay a deep inner struggle. Newly discovered personal letters and diaries of scientists who worked on the project provide new insight into their experiences and thoughts. These documents recount the doubts and ethical dilemmas these men faced as they weighed the consequences of their inventions. In their notes, one can find questions about the morality of creating weapons of such destructive power and about the future of humanity after their use. Scientists ask the question, are we saving the world by creating such weapons, or are we opening a Pandora's box whose consequences cannot be reversed? These letters and diaries give us a glimpse into the souls of the people behind one of the most significant and controversial scientific advances in history. They show that even in the process 
process of creating great inventions, scientists remain first and foremost people with fear, doubt and hope. The scientists worked under the guidance of physicist Robert Oppenheimer, who a few years later would be called the father of atomic weapons. Just recently, a movie was even made on this topic. Odessa Catacombs Huge underground labyrinths are hidden underground in Odessa. The year the first day of people in it is considered to be 1813. This is the year written on the wall. During these years, there was a plague epidemic in the city. Perhaps the catacombs served as a shelter for local residents. During World War II, when the city was occupied from 1941 to 1944, these dark and labyrinthine dungeons became a secret hideout for partisan heroes. Imagine a network of underground paths more than 2,500 kilometers long where you can get lost like in the huge ant hill. It was here, in the dark and cold, that the partisans set up their secret bases. They lived in these dungeons, planned attacks on the enemy, and even printed leaflets calling on people to resist. The catacombs were an ideal place for secretive fighting. The enemy could not easily find or capture them. The partisans used their knowledge of underground labyrinth to shock the enemy, suddenly appearing where they were not expected and disappearing without a trace. It was dark, damp, and very difficult to live in these dungeons, but thanks to the courage and resourcefulness of the partisans, the catacombs became one of the symbols of the unbroken spirit of Odessa. In fact, the history of these labyrinths is so ancient that it has even acquired some legends, one of which says that in the depth of the catacombs lives a short man covered with wool. To survive, he eats bats. Hitler's Wolf Slayer Hidden deep in the forest of Poland lies a mysterious place known as the Wolf Slayer. This is not just a forest, but a whole city underground with secret bunkers, where Hitler and his inner circle spent a lot of time during the war. Imagine underground houses where big plans were discussed and mysterious strategies were made. Archaeologists, like detectives, delve into these places and find things that tell us about the life of the Nazis at that time. They found personal items, maps, and even old letters that seem to whisper stories from the past. These objects help us find out how the people who created the war plans actually lived and thought. About 200 objects were built on an area of 250 hectares. These included air raid shelters, lighter concrete and brick structures, and wooden barracks. The headquarters had two landing sites and a railway station. The walls of the buildings were covered with a mixture of seaweed and green paint, which when the solution was added turned into a green naturally uneven and porous plaster. A very sophisticated psychological disguise was also used. In particular, it was about the fact that the people who worked on the construction of the wolf's lair had civilian passports. Nowadays, you can go to the wolf's den as a tourist. For a small fee, you can visit the places where Hitler and his entire retinue directly lived. But there is another area that is free for everyone. Secret Documents of the Yalta Conference in February 1945, as World War II was drawing to a close, three of the most powerful men of the time, US President Franklin D. Roosevelt, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill and Soviet Union leader Joseph Stalin, met in Yalta, a city on the Black Sea, which was then part of the USSR. This meeting went down in history as the Yalta Conference. The leader's task was to discuss and decide how the world would be structured after the fall of Nazi Germany to ensure long-term peace and security. Newly discovered and release secret documents from that conference shed light on the complex negotiations and diplomatic maneuvers that took place behind closed doors. These materials include minutes of meetings, personal letters, and the diaries of participants through which we can see how decisions were formed regarding the borders of countries, the reconstruction of destroyed territories, and the creation of the United Nations. Particularly intriguing are discussions of the divisions of Germany into occupation zones, which subsequently led to the long division of the country into East and West Germany and plans for Poland, which caused many disputes and controversy. The documents also discuss the fate of other countries in Europe and Asia, including questions about economic recovery, war crimes, and the future world order. And it would seem that the Yalta Conference marked the beginning of peace on our planet. However, this is geopolitics, and everything is not so simple here. After the defeat of Nazi Germany, new wars and conflicts began in the world, which did not end to this day. The most interesting thing is that the main players are the same, and the world is is still in tension and a few steps away from the start of a new Third World War, with the possible use of those same atomic weapons. In one of the previous videos, I also talked about 20 incredible discoveries of the Second World War. I recommend that you watch it as well. See you in new videos!